All right, ladies, good morning. Just to let you know that this is a pre-recorded presentation. And so what we're going to do, our topic for today is sources of information. And our lesson objective is that you should be able to you should be able to demonstrate an understanding of the various sources of information available to collect data for your research. So in other words, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to evaluate, find out what are the different sources that you're going to use uh, in your research. Now, what is sources of information. So sources of information refers to the materials or the documents already in existence that can guide your study and offer suggestion as to how your study can be structured and executed. These sources are reviewed and analyzed in your literature review. So that is where you're going to uh, review your sources. Now, it is very important, ladies, to, to select good sources, valid sources, reliable sources. And the reason for this is that the sources that you actually select in for your literature review uh, will be discussed in your discussion of time. And so, you need, and the discussion of findings actually carry a lot of weight in the IE. Now, there are several different sources of information, and one of them is existing literature, which refers to writings on a particular topic, whether from a book or a journal article, and this is usually print literature. The next source of information is internet, things that you actually and on the internet, and it must be credible, right? It can't be from any and any site. It should be from uh, a site that is uh, an academic site, either from a university or recognized encyclopedia or something like that. Now, internet sources refers to articles, books, anything that is produced electronically that you actually go onto the internet and access that. Next is oral histories. And oral history record refers to recording the preservation and interpretation of historical information based on personal experiences and opinions of the speaker. So for example, uh, if you have someone who want to do a research on a, the Roman Catholic Church in Anova, and they need some specific information that is not available in the literature, you could go and interview that person uh, to glean that history from the, the individual who was actually around when the church was being built or maybe their grandparents told them about the church or something that it. Now, uh, sources of information, uh, another one is through newspaper, right? Newspaper reports. So most of us will be able to use the newspaper reports. Most of us would be able to use the newspaper reports. One second. Most of us would be able to use the the internet the internet, the newspaper reports, and newspaper reports are very important because newspaper reports, it tells the reader about events that have happened 
uh, maybe locally, internationally, uh, internationally, they provide answers to who, what, where, when, why, and how. So I doubt most of us will use uh, internet articles because internet articles are very helpful, but I'm not so sure that most of us will actually do things like oral history because it's on a topic that I've seen thus far, oral history is not something that is required for that for those topics. Uh, archive is another source of information where you can go and access. You have the archive in Spanish Town. You have also the National Library, where you can go to get to to get information, primary sources uh, such as recordings documents, manuscripts, all of these different stuff. Again, for archive, I doubt you'll be able, based on the topics that I've seen, archival sources is not really required for those research. But if you want to include them, you may include. Another source of information is meetings, minutes of meetings and these quite a lot of companies, organization actually have minutes that you can actually see the minutes. Uh, so for example, if you're doing something on environment, uh, there are minutes of the meetings that are available in the various, for example, at NEPA that you can go ask for the minutes of the meeting because those minutes are public. Uh, documents if it is and uh, some other organizations uh cultural organization they could give you the minutes and the minutes of those minutes of those meetings uh help you to you see the names of the participants the agenda what was covered what was actually discussed in the meeting the debates and all of these different stuff and so you can glean information for your study from the minutes of meetings. Now you just don't go about and just choose, choose uh, your sources just like that. You just don't go on the internet and see an article and you just take it uh, uh, face value and say, all right, I'm going to use it. Or the same thing for a book or a newspaper article, you don't do that. So what you're going to do is that you're going to select your article based on these criteria. So one, the first criteria is authority. You need to, we are going to go into authority, accuracy, and content. So those are the three criteria that we're going to use to select our sources. Right, and actually when you write in your literature review, you need to discuss these criteria in your literature review. Now, when we're talking about the first criteria, authority, you need to know who is the author, the credential of the author. For example, if you're doing something on culture, dance hall, you see a book on dance all. You need to know who is the author because any and anybody can write a book on dance. Hall. So you need to know who is the author and the credential. So for example, you could find a book that was written by Professor Donna Hope or someone else who is within that field. Uh, in addition, you need to know If, if there's no author, for example, because you could have no author for a book or no author for an internet source, right? And I've gone through that already where I've seen a book, I've been to the archive, going to the archive, there is a book there, but there's no author there. They need to find out uh, when it was actually written, 
and whether it was a commissioned book, because if it is usually a commissioned book, they usually don't put, um, it's usually a book that uh, compiled or written by several different persons. So you need to find out these information. Now, after you find out information about the author and its credential, you need to, the next criteria is accuracy. Evaluate the sources and the accuracy of the information and the bibliographic information by asking the following questions. They ask these questions, does the information in the article or the book appear correct? Does the article have a bibliography or reference list? Is it clear where the author got his or her information? Is it obvious who is responsible for the information? Now, if you cannot verify the informi that the information is correct or that the author is an expert on the topic, you should not use that source. So you have to be very, very careful on the source that you're using. The next one is content. Uh, so when you're another criteria in evaluating your sources is the content. And you evaluate your sources based on the content by asking these questions. Does the content address the topic effectively? Are the key questions about your topic answered within the content? Does the content seem like it is likely to help your research? Does the content provide any information that is new? are useful. So while evaluating the while evaluating the content is important. While evaluating, you should actually ensure that the content that is there is important for your particular study. All right. So I'm going to give you an example. If you are doing a research on pollution in Jamaica, right? You're pollution in Jamaica. So that's your research that you're doing. And uh, I should not use, well, not Jamaica, but pollution in Spanish Town or some community in Spanish Town because its research must be specific, a specific location. You don't just go and take up a book and when you look at the content, it's talking about pollution in Asia or pollution in the North America. It must be re related. So you need to go and find information that is dealing with pollution in Jamaica, if you can't find a book or a source that is dealing with pollution in Jamaica, you can't find something that is dealing with something on the Caribbean. If you can't find nothing on the Caribbean, which I doubt, then you can use a source uh, that is on a topic of another region of the world. Which brings me to this one, uh, relevance. You evaluate your sources based on relevance by asking the following question. Is the information and the content relevant to your research paper or topic? Sometimes sources relevance is not apparent until you have read all or most of the information. In many instances, however, you can judge the relevance by looking at the following aspects of a source. So you go into the table of content, you read the introduction of the book, and sometimes you read the conclusion. Most time when I'm reading a book, there are the, the two places that I actually start first is uh, the conclusion. Yes, I start at the conclusion. And then I go through the, the introduction and then I glean through the table of content. 
to see if the information is relevant. And so you just, uh, we are not telling you to go and read an entire book. No, you have to gleam, to gleam the book, go through the book uh, to see if it is relevant to your topic. Go use the index also of the book when it is applicable because we know that not all books have actually an index, right? Objectivity is very, uh, is another criteria that we should use. Objective, and the truth is that uh, every single material that we use to some extent have its biases, right? But it should be, the biases should not be overly subjective. So we should ask the following question, is the objectivity of the source clear? Is there any obvious bias? Is the purpose obvious? Is the sole purpose of the article to give information or is it to promote or try to sell something? So we need to ask ourselves the question about objectivity. So just a recap, so we need to look at objectivity, relevance, the content, accuracy, and also the author. So those are some of the things that we actually need when we are evaluating our sources. Now, the next thing is audience. Who was it actually uh, addressing? Is the in intended audience a group of experts or it's for general, a general audience? Is it for the public? What is the sole audience? Who it was actually geared towards, the material that you're going to Another is the style. Is the organization content logical? Is there a clear presentation of the argument? Is the text easy to read? Is it too word? Is it too formal? Is it choppy? And sometimes based on the writing style, especially when you're looking at internet sources, the writing style alone can tell you that, listen, this was not written by a, a person uh, with some level of, you know, university experience or a scholar or something like that. Because you're going to spot out some of the things when you see the, when it comes to the writing style. Another is the currency. You evaluate, is, evaluate your sources based on currency. When was the source published or written? The time when it was published. So we are saying, for instance, if you are doing some research on uh, pollution in uh, pollution in Eltham Acres in Spanish Town, right? We are not expecting you to find an article on pollution in Eltham Acres that was actually written in 1990. We need a recent article, something that was recently done, right? Now, also, yes. So those are some of the different things that you use to evaluate. You use to evaluate your, your, evaluate your sources. Uh, now for your, literature review, ladies, that you're going to use, you're not going to use we're not going to say that you must use eight to ten sources, I believe. But when once you're preparing your literature, ensure that you have at least eight to 10 sources. So when you are writing for that literature review, you can maybe use uh, two, because I believe you need, well, you actually need 45 sources, right? 45 sources. Now CXC is asking us 
um, that you can't use only books in your literature review. You can't use only newspaper. You can't use only internet sources. You can't use only journal articles. You must mix it. So I would say you could use a book, a textbook, a newspaper article, a professional journal paper, a professional paper, a journal paper, you could also use a YouTube video. So these are some of the different stuff that you're going to actually. So when you're doing your literature review in the initial stage, try to have at least eight to 10 sources that you're going to evaluate, right? Have eight to 10 sources. Not all of your eight to 10 sources will end up in a literature review, but to be safe, have at least eight to 10 sources. Now, the literature review. By now, all the different groups should be able, should be actually completing their introduction and going on to their literature review and sources of information, right? Where are you going to get the information from? So you should be at that place where you're searching for information in order to write the literature. At this stage, you are looking to find out what people have said about your topic in a book, a journal, an article. You should use five sources when writing your literature. Use your research question as a guide as to what to look for when reading. So you might not find a book on a village or the exact topic, but the book might be on a theme you have chosen. The literature review is technical and must not be taken lightly. The quality of your, the quality of your literature review affects the quality of your discussion of finding uh, at the end of your IA. So you will need at least four to six different sources for your literature review. As I said in the initial stage, I would say you to be safe, to be safe, use uh, actually eight to ten, and then you eliminate to see what is closest to the area that you are actually your research on. Now, ladies, there is something that I want to point out when we're doing our literature. And I'm coming. One second. No. There are some there are some times that you can actually find things on the internet, very uh, useful material. And most times students say to me, sir, I can't find a book on the topic that I'm doing. There's something that is called Google Books. So you say, for instance, you're doing a topic on dance hall, dance hall in Jamaica. You type in dance hall in Jamaica. You go right here, and then you go to more, and then you go to Google Books. And it will show you books that are on dance hall in Jamaica. So you have Sonia Stanley Naya, uh, dance hall a read and you have all these different books uh, on dance hall very credibly in the dance hall by Donna Hope and it will help you to find your information right the if you're also for google books you could maybe look at another topic you could look at this social media and teenagers
you have all these books that you can gain access to. Uh, teens, teens and social media, the use of social media. So that is one book, teens and social media, social media and teenagers, mental health, a study. And so we have all of these different materials that you can actually use social networks in youth and adolescents. And if you say, for instance, they are not able, because not all of these books are free, you can go to something that is called Google Scholar. Now, so if you are going to go to Google Scholar to find your information, you can go to Google Scholar, type in Google Scholar, and Google Scholar will able to, sometime on Google Scholar, you'll get journal articles and all of these different. So when you go to Google Scholar, you could find teenage social media and teenagers. And so on here on Google Scholar, you'll be able, you'll find things about like cyberbullying, all of these different stuff. Say, for instance, you want to find something on social media and academic performances. effects of social media is one, the effects of social media on the undergrad students' academic performance is the impact of social media on this, mobile social media usage and academic performances. So there's quite a lot of articles that you can find from Google, Google scholars that will help you. All right, so if I should click on this, this is actually an article that was published by the University of Nebraska, the effects of social media on undergrad students' academic performances. And it is something that is credible that you can actually use, right? Uh, because it is, it is an academic, now, you could also, another way in which I help, so I'm coming out of Google Scholar now and I'm going back to Google Main, where I can look doing something, maybe an academic performances and social media. All right, they really. So let's have got this. And then if I want maybe something like an article, sometimes you can just type in PDF at the end and it will bring up maybe a PDF article. And see, this is one from Research Gates. And you're able to download the article. And this is, is from Research Gate is where quite a lot of professors and university lecturers actually do publish their information. So this is the article here that you can find on your topic. So those are some of the different ways, ladies, in which we find information, all right, on the internet. So just to recap, Just to recap, we did sources of information. There are different, so sources of information actually ref refers to the materials that you're going to use for your research. You can find these materials from printed literature, the internet, or oral history, the archive, minutes from meetings, there are several different criteria that we use when selecting our information, our sources, uh, authorities, one, 
accuracy, content, relevance, objectivity, audience, writing style, currency. So these are some of the things that you're going to look at when you're evaluating your, your literatures, your literature. And also remember that I'm not saying that you must have eight to 10 sources, but I'm saying to just to be safe, find two of each. So find two, two textbooks, two newspaper, two professional articles, two um, journal articles, two audiovisual files made from YouTube. Try and find at least eight to 10. So when you're actually writing your literature review, you can select the best four to five that you're going to actually need for your literature review all right and there's a section on it that actually um, in your research that is called sources of information and for sources of information what this is actually asking is what are the different sources that you actually use in getting your information did you use an interview uh, where you go and find the books when you did the interview, how you did the interview, the question, well, the type of questions that were actually asked. Did you actually give questionnaires? So those are some of the other things that we actually look at when you're doing your, your data collection. How did you go about your collecting your data? All right, ladies? So thank you very much.